What's up guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I just got over here to the shop where it brines. We're, we're working on the race car motor again today. Just tidying up some parts and pieces while I wait on parts and pieces. Let me show you what we got going on. Don't forget we got our race November 26th, Knoxville Dragway, back at the track, going backwards. Turbo John's backwards brawl, come see us. So the first thing we did, we went ahead and calculated the compression ratio. It's actually going to be a little bit less than what we were anticipating. This cylinder is going to be a little bit less than the other ones because of the big gouges in the dome. That's going to be okay. Uh, it's hard to tell on the video, but mic in it, this thing is about almost 60 thousandths in the hole. Sometimes they'll give me 55, 57. Sometimes they'll give me like 62, 63. It's very difficult with the end of this as close as that o-ring is to the surface. So I'm having to measure it from the deck height down. But uh, you think in general, the aluminum rods, you want a little bit shorter rod generally because they do expand a little bit. The general consensus that I hear, which I, you know, I don't know for sure, is about 10 thousandths or so. So I was just figuring the compression ratio and I was basing it on 50 thousandths in the hole with my 40 thousandths gasket compression is going to be about 11 and a half to one. Now this is static compression ratio. This is not dynamic. Dynamic compression ratio is what the camshaft does. So the camshaft makes it a little bit different, uh, of course, because you have overlap. So it makes the dynamic, it makes the, the running compression a lot lower. So that's what our compression is going to be static wise. 11.5 ish is what we're going to have. I just wanted to show y'all the compression ratio really that we're gonna have. So 11 and a half, uh, you know, these pistons, if it was uh, to the top, if it was a, a flat deck, if it was a 9.2 deck motor, then we would have the compression would be like 12.9, 13.2. I think those pistons call with that dome, with that knot on it. I think they say 12.9 is what it is, but they're down in the hole guys. So, I mean, for what we're doing, you know, I guess we got lucky. I guess it's gonna work out since this motor is just a little bit higher uh, deck height. It's not below 9.02. That's standard. 9.02 is the standard deck height when you get to a small block Chevrolet, but this one is 9.055. So I guess it, it's gonna work out for us. Still waiting on parts. Camshaft will be here Tuesday. So we hopefully we can get that. So we're gonna come over here and first thing we're gonna do, we got us another oil pump. Another Melon high volume 55. Uh, we may try to increase the spring pressure just a little bit, change the springs out in this or double up a spring or something. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna go ahead and put the oil pump on it today. And then we're gonna come over here and go ahead and clean the heads. So the heads are, they are still copper coated like crazy. It is amazing to me that that copper coat was able to handle the combustion. I thought it was gonna fire off for sure. So it might do a little bit better job uh, doing a little bit less copper coat. Now, one of the things I had to do also, I need to take this distributor with me is for some reason, everything is kind of aligning a little bit different. So I had to make me a nice thicker shim here. So I love this thing because of just what it is and how it works. But this may, I may end up having to get me an MSD, one of the adjustable collar ones because I'm, this is still a little tight, so it's a little too far down. So I'm gonna play with that and see if I can get me another shim that is not quite so big, and I'm gonna need another one there. You see, that's just a lot of shims and gaskets. An adjustable collar would be ideal. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and, yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and order an MSD one. I can have it in a few days. 
They're like 300 bucks. It's the little cam sink that's got the little eye on it. So we'll do that. Uh, go ahead and get that done. Go ahead and clean the intake, get the intake ready to uh, put on. And turbo kit and all this stuff is over here. I got to get the end off of the, the cam. So that cam shaft, uh, I'll throw that one on eBay and try to sell that one. But there again, it's a 50 millimeter. Uh, so we got all this stuff over here. Turbo kit, that worked out pretty good. We didn't have to really take anything all apart. So that one comes apart just like Brian's now. So that makes it a lot easier to do. I've got to get the fitting off of, or not the fitting, but the pickup off of that oil pump down there. I uh, got the liquors, go ahead and clean all that stuff. So I guess today is going to be more or less just cleaning and getting the oil pump on it. So, okay, so something I've never done before, but I've seen people do it and I've heard of people doing it. Regular melon high volume 55 pump. This is the standard cover. Uh, the pressure regulator is down in there. And so I took the spring out of both of them, but this is actually the suction. So this is from the factory. And if you look down in there, it's like it's just, you know, cut with a drill bit. So this is the suction side. So we understand, we know that suction is important. I had never really looked at it, but that is definitely not the best flow wise that I have ever seen. So I took a little side grinder or die grinder and I just basically went in there and kind of opened this up. This is cast iron. So it very easy, very quickly, it will open up. So you have to be careful not to take out too much material, but basically I was just trying to make it so it would flow just a little bit better. So uh, this is the purple spring. That's the 70 PSI spring. Uh, the other one had it too, but I guess the paint just wore off of it. So we ported the, the suction side just a little bit to give it so, and you know, if you think about it, uh, you know, flow is important, but there again, it's important. Uh, if you think about, if you have a straw and it's a little teeny straw, it takes less suction to get the, the liquid up if you're drinking a drink versus if you have a great big one. So you have to be careful not to open it up too much, I would imagine. Uh, like I said, this is my first time ever doing this. So uh, we're gonna do that and I'm gonna look at the, the, end, the, the pressure side and see if there's anything that I can do in there as well. I've heard of people going in there and smoothing off a bunch of stuff. Uh, that looks pretty, pretty straightforward other than you know, the casting. So I'm probably not going to do anything on this side uh, where this mates up to the block, you know, is pretty important. Some of these pumps come with like a copper gasket, but melon is not one of those. So I think all I'm going to do today, we'll see if it helps any or not, is we'll, we'll just do this side here. Okay, the oil pump is on and mounted. So we had to put the screen in it. This is just for that pan. Generally, when you buy a pan, it comes with a pickup usually. If not, they do make uh, special ones. At some point, I'm gonna get that billet all one piece uh, oil pump. That's just not gonna happen right now, but this works pretty good. I retorted everything, everything was fine. In torque specs, so we're good there. So I'm gonna clean up the heads real fast and I guess that's gonna be it for tonight. Just gonna basically spray them down and take a razor blade and get the copper coat off of them. And hopefully we'll be good to go. So hopefully this compression is gonna be fine. I think we're okay, but we'll see. All right guys, comment, like, and subscribe. TurboJohnRacing.com, grab yourself some merchandise. And don't forget, November 26th, Knoxville Dragway, Turbo John's Backwards Brawl.